why does the Federal Reserve hate gold and silver too? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I really appreciate it. So why does the Fed hate gold and silver? You know they do, right? Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's a, Even it's if it has been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money well, either, do, but they're a financial do, why asset. Why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form of reserves. It's a why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. Well, some people still think it's money. Ah, good old Ben Bernanke. <laughs> but he's not alone either. Forget that central banks all around the world are stockpiling gold and repatriating it in record numbers. Their disdain for the yellow and silver metals are huge. But why? Why do they hate it so much? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain what the Fed's job is and how it has radically changed. I'll also discuss the reasons that they hate it. And then I'm going to talk about what is going to happen with silver and gold as it relates to the Federal Reserve. But before I get into all that, let's backtrack just a bit and talk about what the original job of the Fed was, what the original mandate was that was put forth in the Federal Reserve Act. Well, there were three main things. First, it was supposed to uh, furnish an elastic currency. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, they're supposed to be able to expand and contract the money supply based on economic requirements. The second thing was to afford means of rediscounting commercial paper. What? What? It means that they act like a bank. And the third thing is to establish a more effective supervision of banking in the U.S. In other words, supervise banks. So basically, that's it. Three things. You know, provide currency that is elastic. Uh, you know, act as a bank and supervise banks. Sounds pretty simple, right? And that lasted quite a long time, actually, from 1913 all the way up to 1977. That was the Fed's mandate. But in 1977, they amended the Federal Reserve Act. They wanted more jobs for the Fed to do. Namely, they wanted them to promote goals of maximum employment, stable prices, and to influence long-term interest rates. So those were additional uh, goals, uh, requirements, uh, jobs, if you will, for the Fed. Why? Why did they do that? Wasn't it good enough for, I don't know, uh, you know 60 plus years? Well, during the 70s, we had massive stagflation. We had rising unemployment, rising prices, rising interest rates. It was awful. The Fed was put in charge to solve all those problems. But here's the irony of it all. It was the Federal Reserve that had caused the problems in the 70s. 1971, what happened? Nixon abandoned the gold standard. They didn't have to worry about that pesky gold thing anymore, right? The federal government was running big deficits in the 70s and inflation was shooting way up. The Fed just bought the treasuries and printed the money to do it. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> it should. It got crazy and they weakened the economy because of it. The government charged the Fed to solve the problems that they actually had created. <laughs> That's like, you know, hiring an arsonist to put out their own fires. <laughs> and of course, they failed. Unemployment, consumer prices, they all kept going higher. It wasn't until Fed Chairman Paul Volcker showed up in 1979 and basically he had ignored uh two of the three new mandates. He focused on controlling inflation and 
he raised rates by nine and three quarters percentage points. He raised rates nine and three quarters percentage points from 10 and a quarter all the way up to 20% in March of 1980. 20%. Can you imagine that? Mortgages were just, you know, went through the roof. And people hated him with a passion. Uh, companies, uh, the government, rank and file, everyday Joe, they all hated him. Well, everybody except Ronald Reagan. He actually supported him fully. Can you imagine, just for a minute, what Trump would tweet out if Powell did that, raise rates to like 20%? <laughs> he would be fired immediately. But you see, what Volcker did was he let the free markets go. He just turned them loose. And it was the right thing to do. It worked. They called it the Volcker shock. And it crushed inflation. It tamed consumer price index, the CPI. Now, a recession ensued, yes. But it wasn't the medicine that caused it. It was the Fed's cancer of deficit spending and printing money to buy our debt. That was the real cause of the recession. And now <laughs> our national debt is 32 times that of 1979. 40 years later, we don't do the right thing anymore. We do the a, a politically expedient thing now. We we abuse our position as the reserve currency of the world. We suppress interest rates. We print currency like imbeciles and monetize and buy up all the debt. All the Fed can do is increase inflation. That's it. And boy, do they love inflation, right? You know, forget about that price stability crap. Now they 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 target inflation. How does money printing help with creating anything of value? It doesn't, folks. It, and this is important. Okay, guys, listen up. I want you to hear this. Currency is simply a way to measure wealth, measure the economy. Currency doesn't add wealth. It, it doesn't grow the economy. That's... That's, that's like saying the more rulers you have in your house, the more valuable your home. Let's just, let's just all purchase a bunch of rulers. Okay, heck, let's buy some yardsticks. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Shoot, what are they going for on Amazon anyway? I don't know, but maybe we should just buy cases of them. Stick them in your house. Man, can you imagine the size of your property then? You'd have a freaking mansion. Currency is simply a way to measure wealth, to measure the economy. It's, it, it, it simply is a way to divide up what we produce. All right, so that, that's how the job of the Fed changed. <laughs> For the worse, I might add. But why do they hate this stuff? Why, why do they hate gold and, and silver? Because they do. <laughs> well, I would argue that the Fed's real job is to instill confidence in the U.S. dollar. You see, when, when gold goes up in price, it usually is an indictment on the dollar's dwindling value. You see, gold and silver act like stores of value against the dollar. And the Fed hates that, okay? They, they want to prop up the dollar. The Fed also hates it when the price of gold and silver rise because it correlates with rising unemployment. Remember that bogus mandate I mentioned? You know, they had to, you know, somehow, uh, you know, make sure that we have high employment. It's, it, it is bogus. They can't directly do any of that. But but they, you know, constantly talk about a really good labor participation rate. Well, check this out. 
you can see, at least during this time frame, as the price of gold goes up, the labor participation rate goes down, and they hate that. Another reason why uh, the Federal Reserve just, just hates gold and silver, I think, is because that it reveals the Fed's inability to stabilize prices. You know, it's an embarrassment to them. You know, seeing gold go up and, you know, prices increase, it, it reveals how impotent the Fed really is. When we had a gold standard, the... The U.S. government was limited in its ability to do deficit spending. It could only build so much debt, and then that was it. The gold standard forced uh, a level of um, U.S. austerity, basically. When the government abandoned the gold standard, it gained the power to expand their balance sheet. Completely, with, with, with uh, zero limitations. Gold limits the power and influence of central banksters. No wonder they hate it. And frankly, they're not alone. The Congress and the President, yeah, they hate that limitation too. They want to be able to print and spend as much as they want. Oh, and I do think there is one more job. <laughs> that under the reins of the last four chairs of the Fed, Fed chairs uh, uh, Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell, this job has taken center stage. And it's something that every single one of them would deny to your face. And that is to prop up the stock market. Now, I've talked about the stock market a lot. I'm not going to do it here much. But just let me say, the, the, the markets... <laughs> they were priced for perfection before this medical crisis we had. And now they are at ludicrous levels. In my opinion, you need to lighten up on the stock market. B but enough about that. What is the end game with this hatred of precious metals? Where is this leading the Fed and us too? Well, <laughs> we're on the precipice, folks. We're... We are almost to the end, I believe, of this monetary system. And it is going to end. And I believe it's going to end in my lifetime. I believe our reserve currency status is going to be lost. The trust in the dollar obliterated. And a reset, a monetary reset is going to come. But nobody even sees it, or relatively no one does. <laughs> They don't stack silver and gold. They think this is a you know an arcane metal, <laughs> you know. But uh, gold, it's going to rocket up, folks. I think five thousand, ten thousand dollars an ounce is likely by the end of this decade. I really, truly do. Silver, I think silver. Oh man, oh, I think silver is going to go to triple dig digits, easy. Yeah, I think it's going to hit $200, $300 an ounce. No problem by the end of this decade. And that is why you need to be stacking this stuff. I do think you may have a little bit of time. I'm not saying it's going to happen right away. Things like this usually take time to materialize. They go slow, but when it happens, it's going to happen fast. So again, those are the reasons why the Fed hates this stuff and why you need to be stacking it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to do. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you uh, subscribe and the bell icon. Yeah, that will help you know when another video pops up on my channel. And oh, check out the description below. I put a lot of cool links in there for you. And as always, I hope your day is a-okay.